Good afternoon. Since Friday, April the 3rd, we have seen a 47% increase in confirmed COVID-19 cases here in Baltimore City. As of this morning, the city has 459 reported cases, 211 people hospitalized with COVID-19, and nine deaths. We remain committed to scaling up our response to this emergency while continuing to leverage the wealth of medical and public health expertise here in Baltimore City. Building from the announcement made Friday about the public-private partnership, which is committed to supporting our community, I have a few updates that offer more information about the program and what it means for our residents. I'm excited to announce that this public-private partnership is standing up a call center staffed by trained healthcare professionals to help people who are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms and want medical advice. This operation is critical in supporting people from the safety of their homes. We cannot stress this enough, avoiding hospitals and healthcare facilities when possible can save lives. And we're asking your help in minimizing your contact with hospitals and healthcare facilities during this time. We're starting to transfer calls from 211 to this call center, and it will continue to scale in this response and its accessibility. More to come about this call center on Friday, April the 10th. Now I will ask Baltimore City Health Commissioner Leticia Zarasa to update you on our COVID response and our work to support vulnerable population. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Young, for your leadership, and thanks to my colleagues and our partners for their support. Working with our partners as part of the public-private partnership, the city has created a set of dashboards and analytical tools which take data from the health department, key hospital partners, and the state to inform local leaders on key indicators for a COVID-19 response. These data points include tracking case and death data, including breakdowns of geography and rate of case growth, tracking of medical system capacity, including ICU and acute care beds, surge capacity, key medical equipment, and citywide plans for new capacity, such as the convention center, modeling of disease progression to inform capacity planning and response efforts, tracking of support of vulnerable populations, and tracking of city service capacity and response. Additionally, we are excited about our partnership with the Maryland Department of Health and local health care facilities to provide additional support to our long-term care facilities in the form of the newly announced strike teams. These teams will provide additional support to our long-term care facilities experiencing residents with COVID-19. We will continue to advise long-term care facilities on isolation and quarantine protocols, cohorting, and general infection control as we work to protect one of our most vulnerable groups of people. I would now like to invite Director Anthony from the Mayor's Office of Homeless Services to provide an update on our homeless population and COVID-19. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mayor Young, for his continued leadership uh, in support of everything that's going on with the COVID-19 response. Beginning this week, the Mayor's Office of Homeless Services uh, began to relocate vulnerable residents over the age of 62 from our city's three largest emergency shelters to motels. On March 20th, the city began transporting and supporting homeless individuals who were tested for COVID-19 and awaiting test results or who tested positive and did not have a permanent location to go back to and to being temporarily placed in motels for isolation. Since that time, 56 individuals who were homeless or living in congregate living settings have been served in our isolation location. This week, uh, we are, we've begun the process of relocating 150 vulnerable but healthy individuals from our city's three emergency shelters. Uh, they will be moved to motels in the vicinity. In addition, remaining residents currently sheltered at both Monument Street at Monument Street shelter will be re relocated to a larger more suitable location to allow for appropriate social distancing. The city health department, the mayor's office of homeless services, healthcare for the homeless and our area hospitals have developed a screening process screening process and protocol for homeless individuals and the mayor's office of homeless services continues to reach out to those who stay in encampments on the streets. Over the course of this week, our efforts will continue to relocate individuals to places where they can appropriately social distance. Um, again, Monument Street will be moving to another location and across our other three city shelters, we will be moving those individuals to 
locations that have appropriate social distancing, which is in motels. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jerry Ann, and thank you to our health commissioner um, for your hard work on behalf of Baltimore's residents, especially our vulnerable population. I also wanted to give a special thanks to the Department of Transportation, who has been assisting with a lot of the logistics in reference to our COVID-19 uh, response. Now I will have Chief Niles Ford from the Baltimore City Fire Department come up and provide updates. Good afternoon, all. Thank you, Mayor Young, for your leadership, and thank you to Dr. Raza for being a champion in this fight to help our community stop the spread of COVID-19. I also want to thank the citizens of Baltimore for your cooperation in following Governor Hogan's stay-at-home executive order. We understand it's not easy, but we are all, all in this together. When COVID-19 landed in, in Maryland, I knew it was a matter of time before it would directly impact Baltimore City. And when it did, COVID-19 impacted our residents and our members. As an agency, similar to other agencies as well, we continue to take all necessary steps needed to protect our members so we all can better serve our community. As first responders, we deal with uh, pandemic and natural disasters and other situations. And we are incredibly prepared to face COVID-19 head on. Consequently, we've taken several progressive steps to ensure the safety of our members while remaining focused on the well-being of our community to that end, as the numbers of positive, case, positive cases in Baltimore increase, we are now directing all members wear a surgical mask throughout the duration of their entire shift. Our goal is not to alarm the public or alarm the community. Our goal is to protect the community. For our members, wearing surgical masks will help lower the risk of exposure to their coworkers from a potentially infected member. As, fire respond, as first responders, rather, we serve the community daily, under any circumstances and in any condition, which consequently makes us more vulnerable to COVID-19. And unfortunately, there's no way to get around it. But we can, we can and we will remain proactive during this pandemic. I would like to now to introduce Deputy Chief Matz over EMS. Thank you and good afternoon. Under the direction and leadership of Mayor Young and Chief Ford, and in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are being very proactive and implemented some novel programs to mitigate the spread of coronavirus. One of those programs we put in effect about three weeks ago is the Viral Syndrome Pandemic Triage Protocol. I know it's a mouthful, but basically the state of Maryland, our governing agency, developed a program. It's just what it said, it's a viral syndrome. It's a flu-like syndrome or a COVID-like syndrome. If we have patients that meet certain criteria, they can stay home. Some of that criteria is they have to be between the ages of two and 55. They have to have two of the following four symptoms they have to be positive, a fever, cough, body aches, or sore throat. They also have to have no history of immunosuppression or medication to suppress your immune system. That's for patients that are like cancer patients or transplant patients. They also can have no history of diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, or COPD. The vital signs have to be within normal limits, um, and they also have to be able to ambulate or walk. If they agree to those terms, we'll go ahead and we'll leave the patient with leave behind instructions so they can convalesce at home. 24 hours later, we're going to call them and do a follow-up to make sure they're still okay or if they need any additional services. Some other programs that we just put in effect actually yesterday is a telephone triage line. It's going to be manned by medical professionals. That's going to be your seasoned paramedics and your dual licensed paramedics and uh, nurses that are going to be screening low acuity or low priority calls. We're trying to look for appropriate use of the 911 system. It's going to operate seven days a week from 7 to 3 and 3 to 11. They have a very robust set of protocols that have been approved by our medical directors. They're also going to do the 24-hour follow-up like we did in the other program. And they have a robust QA process to look for adverse medical uh, events or outcomes from our program. Future directions of the program, we're looking in a few weeks to add a physician-directed telemedicine program. 
and potentially to leverage our mobile integrated healthcare community pr paramedicine program, which is basically our treat and release program, potentially to go to someone's home and treat and release them there. Finally, uh, we also started our commercial surge program on Monday. In response to the anticipated increase in call volume, we, we were able to leverage a commercial surge contract. Our existing call volume runs four to 600 calls per day. The state of Maryland told us be prepared for 800 to 1,200 calls per day. What we did is the commercial service is going to provide assistance for our low acuity calls. They're going to be staffing units seven days a week from seven to three and three to 11. They're going to be manning the four quadrants of the city, the northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. They're going to have interoperable radio communications. They're also going to be using our mobile data terminals. They're also going to be using our elite platform, which is the patient care reporting platform that we use. It's going to be temporary. Once this emergency abates, the program will go back to where it was before. I'd also like to close. Please stay at home, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect your community. Now I'd like to introduce the System Chief of Operations, Steve Sale. Thank you, Chief. Um, okay, so the city's EOC Emergency Operations Center, it's now up to a month. We've been fully activated and operational 24-7 for a month now, and we'll continue to stay at that status for as long as, as required. Um, our 911 specialists continue to screen all 911 calls for potential positive COVID-19. Uh, this is done to keep both our providers and our citizens safe. Uh, the OEM continues to help ensure that the city agencies continue to maintain their critical missions and their critical infrastructure, including fire, rescue, EMS, law enforcement, and public works. The fire department and OEM continues to ensure that all city's frontline personnel and first responders are supplied with personal protective equipment and supplies needed to keep everyone safe. This is now including our city administrative employees that continue to work every day to keep our government moving. We are in the process of making sure these employees receive their own reusable and washable masks in the near future. Additionally, employees within the Baltimore Police Department re recently received 700 of these masks to help limit their exposure. Multiple agencies, including the Maryland National Guard, continue to work in the EOC planning for the days ahead, weeks ahead, months ahead, so the city remains ready and prepared and we can stay ahead as, as much as we can. One of our top missions now is working with our health care community to build screening sites throughout the city. We are evaluating multiple sites throughout the city so that all of our citizens will have access. You may see these sites pop up in the next week or so. This includes the large screening site of Pimlico Racetrack, which is up and pretty much ready to go as soon as we can get it moving. So one thing I would just like to remind everyone, if you have an emergency, call 911. If you have questions about coronavirus, call 211. Now I'll turn it over to Commissioner Harrison. Thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for your leadership. The Baltimore Police Department continues to take the necessary steps to protect our officers and the public during this COVID-19 pandemic. Every day, the men and women of this department go out to serve and protect in the most challenging and dangerous circumstances. We continue to work in educating and enforcing residents of the governor's stay home orders to minimize the spread of this dangerous and deadly virus in our communities. Our COVID-19 task force is hard at work ensuring that all of our members have the equipment and the training and the necessary processes in place to keep our members safe during this critical time. Last week, the department implemented daily health checks for all officers requesting that officers take their temperatures twice a day. Members must wear their N95 masks while on any calls for service and during any interaction with the public. This includes foot patrols and business checks. These new directives, coupled with standard universal precautions, will go great lengths in keeping our members and our citizens protected. We announced yesterday that the Southwest District has reopened after the building and all of our cars were sanitized. As of this moment, the department has 12 members that have tested positive for COVID-19, with 67 officers currently awaiting test results. Since the beginning of this pandemic, 309 officers have been quarantined for some length of time. 
We now currently have 150 members that are currently quarantined and totally 194 officers have been cleared to return to work. The department will continue to work aggressively in minimizing the exposure of COVID-19 to our officers and the citizens of Baltimore. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And um, before we take a few questions, I want to reemphasize re to the Baltimore City residents that social distancing is still something that we require. And we're asking you to follow that um, order um, like it, your life depends on it because your life do depend on it. Because if you take something home to your grandma, your mom, or your children, you can affect them as well. So I'm asking and begging for you to practice a social distancing. We'll take a few questions. Well, right now, now I'll let um, uh, Mr. Raymond speak to that um, because we have a lot of other things that uh, the council is asking for, and none of them are responsible for the budget. They're asking for our hotel rooms for all of the homeless people, which we have already started. Uh, we've been, we have been doing that. Um, they're asking for a lot of things, and they really don't know what the budget looks like because uh, Henry Raymond is the budget director, and our budget don't look good in this pandemic. You know, and, and we have to be reasonable and not being political about this because this is an epidemic, a pandemic that we have never faced. And we have, we're, our budget is, is drained and we're depending on the federal government to have some kind of leg, leg room for us to be able to replenish our budget. Mr. Raymond. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for your leadership on the financial side of the House. Uh, in response to the question, use utilization of the rainy day fund, the rainy day fund will be utilized for uh, core city services. We're looking at other funding sources for the myriad of requests that have come in. As the mayor was indicating, we're looking at a, a deficit for the current fiscal year, approximately $42 million. As it relates to fiscal 21, we've had to write down revenue by over 100 million. We have to be very judicious in the use of the rainy day fund. And in the coming days, uh, we'll make those decisions about what potential expenses should be used against the rainy day fund. I believe as everyone is aware, we have implemented a current year uh, expenditure freeze where we have shut down hiring except for uh, first responder, public safety, and other critical uh, missions of the city. So once we have a better picture of where we stand, then we can have a more informed discussion about the use of the Rainy Day Fund. Thank you. Can we ask Health Commissioner a question? Sure. Sir. So I think uh, we're looking at the same models that the state is looking at, and certainly the timeline has shifted um, to the end of April towards early May as a potential time for surge. I think what's important to note is that we're planning for that. So um, some of the things that Chief Matz mentioned on how we can divert patients from going to the hospital or the emergency department in the first place, the public-private partnership, which was set up to ensure that there is um, support across the city um, for all of our health care uh, system, is, is some of the things we're putting in place to, to be prepared. I would defer to the state health department to get those specifics. It's available now. We're waiting on the testing kits. We have no idea. So we're, we're hoping to launch by the end of this week. Um, so there will be a partnership with LifeBridge to provide uh, some of the clinical support. Um, additionally, we are receiving tests from the Maryland Department of Health that we're very appreciative um, to also perform testing. 
I can't yeah. hear you. I really haven't seen the video, but I know it's being investigated. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything more that you feel you can do to keep people social distancing? They appear to not be heeding the advice. I can say, truthfully, the majority of the citizens of Baltimore are, you know, obeying that order. Um, it's mainly the younger ones and the ones who are out in criminal activity. But the majority of Baltimore City are respecting that order. Thank you.